module, we'll be talking about how to bangle proof your home. Yes, it is something that requires a little bit of work up front and it's an ongoing process. You probably don't want to feel like you're living in a zoo and you'd probably rather you bring your bangle into your home versus you living in its home. Some of the things that you'll need to be prepared for are your bangle climbing everywhere, getting into everything, getting into cupboards, drawers, on top of shelves, breaking stuff, spreading stuff around the house, stealing things that you don't want stolen, and the list goes on and on and on. I don't think I can convey this in words, so maybe a few images will help you to understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> First thing I'd like to talk about is climbing. Bengals, more than normal cats, have this need to climb everything. They want to get as high as they can get. If they could walk on the ceiling of your house, they would. Some of the things that our Bengals have climbed on top of are cupboards above the closet doors, medicine cabinets, they've climbed on top of the shower before, They've jumped from the countertop to a door and they've balanced there. They've jumped over plywood that's about seven feet tall. They've gotten on top of kitchen cabinets that have about this much space there, places that you don't think a bangle can fit. And I learned early on not to have any valuables on any surface of my house because any surface that can fit a bangle and even surfaces that are too small for bangles, your bangle will try to jump on it. This is probably something you're just gonna have to experience for yourself because every bangle's slightly different, but they all get into equally the same amount of trouble. One thing we have found that works really well is to just keep surfaces clean that bangles may jump on top of. So I'm not a fan of having all sorts of glass plates and plants on top of my kitchen cabinets because it's just a matter of time before one of the cats walks up there and it comes crashing down. In fact, we used to, he used to like climbing up there so much that we used to play fetch. We'd throw a toy on top of the kitchen cabinets, he'd jump up, he'd go get the toy, and he'd bring it back. And he would do that again and again and again. So some might say that I was egging on the problem a little bit, and that might be true. And since your bangles will be climbing over everything and some things you probably would rather them not climb on, it's a really good idea to give them a space that they can climb to their little heart's desire. In every house that I've lived in, I've built cat trees and you can go buy some on the market, but they're typically for a really good quality one that's really big, which is exactly what your bangle needs. They can be about $1,000 or at least hundreds of dollars, which for a lot of people, that's a decent investment for a cat tree. If you go down to Lowe's or your local hardware store, you can buy some wood and some leftover parts, maybe a few screws, some rope, and there's really good quality rope out there and bangles just love to scratch on that and climb up it. When I first got my bangles, I built them this really big cat tree and they're so little that I didn't think that they'd be able to jump on all the shelves because it was too far for them. So I ended up building them little ramps from each shelf so they can crawl up. And the first day when I brought them home, they were probably about 10 weeks old, they just went straight up the side. Sometimes building cat trees can be difficult if you live in a small space, like a 500 square foot apartment, which is what I was living in, there wasn't a lot of space for a cat tree. There was hardly enough room for my own furniture. So your choices are have a cat tree that sticks out like a sore thumb, or you can try to be a little creative with your use of space and maybe have a smaller cat tree for them, or you can focus on building up instead of wide. I've also seen things that you can hang on the back of your door that have little shelves for your cats to climb up and this is really nice because every house you'll be in will probably have a door and it's also very portable. One other thing that I did was built shelves in the kitchen. The cats had a big problem with going on the counter and we don't want our cats on the counter for the most part. So we were able to build them shelves in the kitchen that kind of stack like this and that would allow them to climb and feel like they're watching down on the kitchen without actually being on the counter. So this is an example of a way to redirect your cat's behavior to something more positive. Another thing that I've purchased that the cats really liked was a little bed that hangs in the window. This allows them to be really high and see what's going on outside while being inside where they're safe. It's also one more place that they can climb and a place that's okay and they're not gonna break anything. For some reason, cats really like to be really high and look down on their authorities. So just to reinforce, I know most of us probably don't wanna have a house that looks like a cat house, but it's really important that your bangles have an appropriate place to climb and play, sharpen their nails, a place that's theirs because that really is in their nature. They're not just bad cats, they just have a lot of vertical energy, so you need to give them a place to climb that's okay. 
And I'll link to some things below in this video that might give you some ideas, either plans for cat trees or where to get cat trees. Craigslist is always a good option. Or if you live in a really small space, there are some products out there that will still allow your cat to climb and thrive in a small environment. Next up on the list is scratching. In addition to cats needing to climb a lot, they also need to scratch a lot. Hopefully, you can get your bangle to scratch on something that's appropriate instead of inappropriate. Good things to scratch on are cat paper that's laying on the ground that they can just scratch on. It's really great for end of the tables, and it's really great to even give them something to scratch on in all the rooms that they spend time in, though they probably will have one that's their favorite. Bad things to scratch on include chairs, leather chairs, beds, couches, carpet, walls, door frames, anything that can be scratched on may be scratched on by your bangle. The best solution I found for this is really just to have a cat tree that they can scratch their little hearts out on. Whether you cover the cat tree in carpet or rope, those are both really great things for the cats to scratch on. One of our cats, after he sleeps, we swear his nails get dull because he'll go to the cat tree and just start attacking it like crazy for about a minute straight. <laughs> Another point I'd like to bring up is when cats are scratching, they're not just scratching to sharpen their claws, but they're actually marking their territory. It's really important that you give your cats an appropriate place to scratch and mark their territory, but they're still probably gonna try to do it on things such as furniture, which we really don't want. The good thing is that Bengals are very, very smart. So we found that there's some furniture that they'll jump on and they'll start to claw a little bit, but we just say their names and they know what they're doing and they'll stop. And then there's other things that we have to be a little bit more aggressive about. I'll talk about training and disciplining your bangle later on in the series, but there's two types of training you could do. The best one is probably positive reinforcement, which you can do through things such as clicker training. You really want to reinforce that positive behavior of not scratching on your couch, and maybe a substitute for that is sitting on a shelf somewhere. And then another way is punishing the negative behavior, and this can be done through something like a squirt bottle. I know a lot of people aren't pro squirting their cats with a water bottle, and honestly, I'm not either, but it does work when used in moderation. We've had cats that have scratched on things and you just tell them that that's your place and not theirs and eventually they'll stop. At least when you're not home. <music> Cupboards and drawers. Did I already mention once, twice, or ten times in this video series that bangles get into everything? Drawers and cupboards are their favorite. And usually it's about two o'clock in the morning when there's a drawer that they just have to get into. They might not even know what's in there, but they're very, very persistent in getting into it. I found that even cupboards and drawers that are really hard to open, somehow the cats manage it. They just work their little paws in there, use their weight, they open it, and bam, they're in. I've had cats get into drawers before that had things like flour. They've taken the flour and then destroyed it in the bedroom and drug it around everywhere. And it got to a point where them getting in the drawers was so bad that I had to go down to the store and buy baby locks to put on all the cabinets. And even then, for about a week, the cats were really obsessed with getting into the cupboards and drawers. So I'd be falling asleep at night, or I'd be woken up to the cats just going like this, which results in a noise like bang, 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 bang. And it gets really old after about 10 minutes. I've also found that when my cats are bored, they tend to want to explore more and get into more cupboards and drawers. So by making sure they're being played with frequently, Hopefully, they'll be tired when they're done and they'll really just rather sleep or sit by a window and watch some birds or something. A really good way we found to keep the bangles out of cupboards and drawers is to give them things like boxes. That way, they can use all their explorative energy to explore the boxes and multiple boxes. This can keep them busy for sometimes an hour or more. And the fun can last for an entire week. Also, your bangles will get into drawers at some point, no matter how hard you try. So if there's anything you really don't want your bangle getting a hold of, it's probably best to make sure that that is out of their reach, or at least in a box that they can't open. Some things might be jewelry, or your makeup, food, food bags, things like that. Next up on the list, blinds. If you have mini blinds in your house, those are a bangle magnet. It's crazy, you'll have mini blind cat, zoop. Mini blinds are the absolute worst because if you have them, you probably know that they can get bent really easily and bangles love to get in the mini blinds and go like this. Again, usually at two or three in the morning when you're in your 
when you're in really deep sleep. I found that my bangles really like to see what's going on outside. Somehow they know that windows are like the entrance to another world or something. So one thing that really helps is to just pull the blinds up a little bit so they have at least that much space. That way they'll feel like they can jump out and look out the window and they're not gonna have to destroy all of your mini blinds to get there. Some people aren't a fan of sleeping with all their blinds open at night or having their blinds open during the daytime, but this will just eliminate the problem altogether because the blinds are up and there's nothing for your bangles to play with. Bengals are also very smart and because of their nature to want to explore, if there, you have something like a window that once was open and now it's not, all your bangle wants to do is look out that window. It doesn't care what's in the way. That's its sole goal is to look out that window and destroy anything in its path. That cat bed I mentioned earlier that hangs in the window, that's a really good idea because when your cat feels that urge to want to look at the outside world, just put the window up and you could have multiple cat beds around the windows in your home. One of the downsides is that the blinds don't close over them, but they do have suction cups that are easy to take on and off, so you could always move the bed around or take it off at night. But this will allow your bangle to channel some of that energy to explore and look at the world around it without destroying all of your blinds in the process. If you have vertical blinds, you're in much better luck because these are much harder for bangles to destroy. on the counters. If you've ever had a cat, if you've ever known anyone with a cat, if you've ever watched videos about cats, then you know that cats like to explore the counters in hopes that they're gonna find some food. Now I don't think any amount of positive reinforcement or anything is really gonna keep cats off the counter because they know that when you're not home they have full roam of the house, but at least you can try to get them to behave while you are home. The first thing that I recommend you do is get out of the habit of leaving food and extra stuff on the counter. It doesn't matter what it is, peanut butter, white chocolate chips, chicken, bacon, corn. Your bangles are somehow smart enough to know that's food and their new goal is to get whatever is inside the Tupperware container or whatever it is that you left on the counter. So I don't need to spend any time convincing you that cats enjoy walking on the counters, but I would like to share a few things that I have done to make my life a little easier and to keep the bangles off the counter. The first, the bangles have a feeding schedule similar to our own, which is eating about twice a day. So breakfast and dinner. One thing we found is to feed the bangles before we feed ourselves. That way they're not sitting in the kitchen salivating while you're preparing all this delicious food and they want it. Be sure to feed them first. That way maybe it'll take the curb off their hunger and they're probably still gonna want the human food but at least they have the option of eating their own food as well. The next thing I recommend you do is to keep the counters as clean as possible. Sometimes we have a tendency to leave food out or not do the dishes right away and I'm not teaching you how to clean your house here but if your counters are absolutely clean, then that will reduce a lot of temptation for your cats to go on the counter thinking that they're gonna find something really good to eat. The other thing you can try is positive reinforcement. I know a lot of people have had a lot of success with clicker training, so when your cat wants to go on the counter, instead redirect its behavior to a place that is okay to sit, such as shelves in the kitchen that they can sit on, and click the clicker and give them a treat when they go there. That way they'll see that being on the counter does not get them rewards, but going in their designated sitting spot, that does. And as a last resort, although many may not agree with this advice, you can give your cat a little squirt or two, and this will teach them that every time they get on the counter, that's a really bad thing for them. I've noticed that the bangles, when we give them an inch, they'll take a mile. So if we start letting them on the counters, maybe between meals, then they start pushing it just a little bit further until we're cutting up chicken and they're right there in our face. They think it's appropriate to just jump up and try to get in on some of that action. So I would say probably try to make it a rule in your house that there's no cats on the counter ever and do what you ever need to do to kind of reinforce that behavior. Next thing on the list is not keeping liquids next to valuable items such as iPhones and laptops. For the most part, you'll probably be okay, but all it takes is one time for your bangle to dump over that cup of coffee into your brand new laptop or your brand new iPhone and it can ruin the device completely. Bangle cats are fairly coordinated, so for the most part, if you have a glass of water or something like that on the counter, they're probably not gonna walk it over. They'll probably gingerly step around it or over it, but one thing that gets them into trouble is when there's a fly or a mosquito, something like that that's flying around the house. They have a really hard time maintaining their civil behavior and they go absolutely nuts trying to chase it. 99% of the time we've had the cats cause something to spill in our house was because they were chasing something like a fly. 
nothing is off limits for them to climb on to get that fly. So to sum this section up, just be sure that you're really mindful of where you place your beverages. Make sure that you're setting your beverages over a hard surface that's easy to clean, or at least make sure that if it's something like red wine that you're not keeping it on a table that's over a white carpet. lesson I want to share with you is to hide anything that's cricket size because anything that will fit in your cat's mouth they will run off with. For the most part this isn't a big problem. Things like rubber bands, twist ties, milk jug rings, those are things that I don't really mind if the Bengals play with but there's other things that I do mind if they play with. They've been known to hide or run off with my earrings. They've taken little wristbands and put them in the toilet. The first time I thought it was an accident, but after it started happening again and again, I realized that they were doing this on purpose. They've ran off with my makeup brushes. They've stolen earplugs out of my ears while I'm sleeping. They've even stolen caps from food on the counter that I have not been able to find again. So I've had to make my own cap with foil or something like that because I can't find where they put it. Once I thought I was being clever by hiding earrings in my jewelry box because that makes sense, right? This worked for a while, but as the jewelry box was on a shelf over the toilet, the cats really wanted whatever was inside, so they just knocked it off into the toilet, breaking both the jewelry box and chipping the toilet. So this is probably something that you'll have to do a little trial and error with, but over time, really be mindful of where you're putting your stuff and you'll learn to hide important things in a way that your bangles should not get into it. I repeat, should not, but they're pretty clever, so they're probably going to surprise you. The next thing I wanna share that may come as a surprise to you are the doors in your home. Bangles have a tendency to close doors. And while this might not necessarily destroy your home, it can have some negative side effects. When I was working away from home a lot, I had two doors to the bathroom and somehow I'd come home every day and both of them were closed and the cats were on the outside of the bathroom, so they were no longer able to utilize the toilet. I had to start using heavy things like books or eventually I finally bought door stops just so the bangles wouldn't keep closing the doors. They've also been known to close doors while we're sleeping and they're on the outside of the door. And as you'll learn, if you're on the other side of a door, the bangle will want where you're at. So this really isn't good when it's 3 a.m. and the cat is scratching and meowing and jumping on the doorknob just trying to get in once they close the door on themselves. Speaking of doors as well, if you have something like a sliding glass door that you want to remain open in the day, the bangles probably will climb the screens. Did I already mention that bangles love climbing? So doors aren't really a big deal, but it's still something that you want to be mindful about and maybe be warned about because I could see this coming up over the course of owning your bangles. Next up on the list to talk about is your mattress. And again, for most people, this probably isn't a big issue, but it has been an issue at times with my bangles, so I thought I'd share it anyways. For the most part, my bangles are pretty well toilet trained, and they rarely have accidents, but when they do, it's always on the bed. This never happens when we're home, but uh, frequently when we're away, one of our cats has decided to pee or poop on the bed. One thing I found that's a lifesaver is a waterproof mattress cover. Your comforter and sheets, those are all pretty easy to wash, but mattresses, not so much. So once your cat pees in the mattress, you're probably not gonna like that too much. Even when my bangles are being angels and they're doing really, really well and not having any accidents, every time I go on vacation for a day or more, I just stick the waterproof mattress cover on just to be sure because that's one thing that I really can't clean. I'll also warn you that bangles tend to really love crawling in the box spring. I don't know that crawling in the box spring is dangerous for cats, but I really don't like when mine's under there because I can't see him, I just hear him running around. So that's one thing you could do is check the box spring of your mattress and if you need to, staple in all the little loose pieces of fabric just to make sure that your bangle cat can't get under there. One of mine tends to go under there when he's scared or when we're making cat food because it's a loud noise and I really can't do anything to get him out. I just have to hope that he comes out on his own. The next thing I'd like to talk about is outside animals and how that changes the dynamic of your bangles. Like with most other cats, bangles can be territorial. We recently moved to a place that has about five other outdoor cats on the property, and Malik has decided that he's going to be the alpha cat more than ever. I'm pretty lucky that he doesn't do anything too extreme, but when he does see another cat outside, he'll charge the door and he'll stand up and start scratching and huffing, trying to intimidate the other cat, and usually they go away, and I'm really happy that his behavior ends there. 
but I know that other cats will claw the door up, they'll scratch the carpet, they'll ruin the carpet, and they'll even start spraying, which you really don't want. So this isn't always something that you have complete control over, but do what you can do to minimize those issues. When our cat is doing things like that, we try to pull him aside and calm him down, and it is getting a lot better. He's becoming a little more comfortable with the idea that there are other cats on the property, but I, we really hope that it doesn't escalate to anything further. Another thing you might be able to do is if the cat, oh wait, the outside cat shows up in a particular area, you might be able to hide that view from your bangle so it doesn't stress them out and they don't want to mark their territory by closing the door or pulling the window shades, something like that. And the last thing I'd like to share is that bangles are like toddlers, only they never grow up. So it doesn't matter how much you bangle proof your house, you're still going to need to do a lot of babysitting. I consider our house pretty much bangle proof, but there's a lot of times still that we hear weird noises and the cats are in yet another place that we never thought that they would get into, or we hid something from them really, really well and then they found it. are pretty smart and sometimes I feel like they test the waters a little bit so we have a leather chair that sometimes the bangles will jump up on the top of but as soon as we look at them in a stern voice they get right down but if we don't then they'll, they might just be doing it for attention so anytime your bangle starts doing things that it knows are probably bad maybe that's a sign that your bangle needs a little bit more attention so to sum all this up it is possible to bring a bangle or two or maybe more into your home and not feel like you're living in a zoo make sure to take into account what your bangle naturally needs such as its need to play and climb and explore and try to find positive things that it can do rather than punishing it all the time make sure you take into account how your bangle naturally is it has a huge need to explore, run, recreate, and things like that. So just make sure that you give it an area that it can do that, that it won't get into trouble. You'll also want to minimize the other things that your bangle can get into or steal or play with that you really don't want them to do any of those things with. With a little trial and error, it is possible to bring a bangle into your home and both you and your bangle will be very, very happy.